get over that pretty quickly. Um, I remember um, we talked about like working with board. My very, one of my very first board experiences, I only got paid four hundred dollars. And I remember until I met a mutual friend that we yeah. had. Yeah. And um, I was invited to do Black Women in Hollywood in yeah. LA, and I had to do four dresses. And I was so afraid to give them a number. I thought that if I gave them the number that I wanted, that they would say no. And I wanted it more than I think that they wanted, <laughs> wanted me to be there. And I remember, um, I think I said like five or six hundred dollars a dress. I had to do four. And I had a short window to do those four. And I remember our, our mutual friend said no. And she advocated on my behalf and said, I'm gonna ask for way more than that. And to take it further than that, I'm also gonna get Essence to shoot you another $1,500 because you're not asking for enough money. And she had to teach me that. And over time, I had to learn what it means to ask for what I feel like I'm worth. And especially with dealing with, where we're not talking about like another small brand that I'm, I would definitely like say, okay, you know, we'll look out for each other. But when you work talking about these large brands that have major million dollar budgets to be okay with saying I know that I'm worthy and especially when you came to me I didn't come seeking you mm -hmm. you saw my work and so to ask for that and sometimes it still can be tricky but I'm at the point now where it's like I know what I'm worth and if they don't give me what I'm worth I'm okay with saying no I don't want to work with you and I don't care if it's Obama yes. I don't care who it is if I'm not getting paid what I'm worth I'm out because you have, especially when you have the money, and I'll say our counterparts, and I'll leave it at that, I know what you're paying our counterparts. Yes. Like, I know what they're getting paid, so why can't me and my little, this little black bald-headed girl, why can't she get paid the exact same thing? Because what happens is, you, because what, what we don't realize is, it's all by design, we just talked about that, because what that's then gonna become is, we are all proud to wear these designs of Kenya model, you know, Jor, uh, you know, it, it, that, that's a part of their narrative that they get points for, for recognizing a budding talent that's down in Atlanta or whatever the case may be. So that's a part of their large scheme. And we've asked for $200. Mm. And, and this alone is going to Blow chart them, them in a whole different yeah. place because they sought out the culture. They right. sought out this girl that dresses black women beautiful, and she only charged two hundred dollars to do it. Now we lucked up because we have a mutual friend that says no, but that also speaks to your work. Because when people know your work is good, they'll sidebar from the conference call that you're on. They'll send you a text message and say, "Shut up, mm -hmm. no, that's not it." But we have, we have, we have to be impeccable because we have to work harder. Because creatives already, and this is this. Is be an argument. We already don't get the the same cachet that some people that work nine to fives and move up corporate ladders. Like we don't really have a gauge or a system that tells us you're doing well. You know, we don't have a promotion every six months. We don't have a bonus. So we're still trying to prove, like, to our mamas and daddies that I work. I work. I'm not just getting up every day playing around like this is a job. So we're already feeling like I gotta let me just get the opportunity, but. No, your worth is your worth. Mm -hmm. It's true, like to that. My, I remember, uh, like even just, I, I, I say, I struggled and hustled long, longer, way longer than I made any money for myself. And I remember, like my my mom and my my grandma, they were always, even if they see me creating, they would always say, "Well, that's great, but so and so retiring, mm -hmm. you might want to go get that job." Mm -hmm. And I'm like. But I have a job. It may not. It may not be paying. You know what you guys want me to get, but it's paying me a job. But like to her point, like I never I stopped taking no. Like I knew long time ago that I was meant to be a designer. I knew that that was my calling on this earth. I knew it. But you know, like like each and every one of us, nobody knows our calling, our assignment, but us. You know. But and I and I stopped taking no. And when I did. 
I started, because I, I used to be the real estate agent and I was the bartender and I was a manager at a shoe store. And when I was doing these things, none of, all the doors were closed because I wasn't walking in the rooms that I was supposed to. And when I, when my, well, my last manager, she, she fired me because I had a fashion show and I didn't come to work. But <laughs> <laughs> when I stopped working for other people and I said, okay, God, you now have my attention because you keep firing me from jobs and you keep moving me around. When I tell you the things start happening, so many things start happening far beyond what I could um, understand, or you know, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And you know, um, you know, when it comes, especially when it comes to faith, you know, so many people and people believe in what they want, but in my experiences in my life, like nobody can't tell me that my God ain't real Amen. because there are too many experiences and situations that I've been put in. I'm still alive.